But Florian, mm -hmm. I'd like to jump into cold email frameworks in general. And we've alluded to a lot of these components with the subject line and the storytelling, but you give us a really good slide here that kind of breaks down the different sentences, how to formulate those. So all of you who are here, like this can apply to what you're selling as well. Um, yeah. If you could walk us through each of these briefly and just kind of how people should be thinking about them. Yeah. So this is the the standard cold email framework that, um, you know, I, I teach like in my workshops and in my, my course. Some of the uh, emails that I showed you earlier don't necessarily follow like this specific framework to a T, but I wanted to like switch it up a little bit. I don't think this framework is revolutionary to uh, most people because a lot of people in the space that create content have a similar idea in mind. But uh, this is how I generally think about that first email that I sent in a sequence or like the first email in a thread. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that's most important, like, I don't even necessarily focus on one-to-one -one personalization, like, oh, notice you like golf or like all this kind of stuff. You can, and you can build an analogy out of it. It's just very time consuming and volume still does matter quite a bit. So how do you automate more of this? I think the most important thing is being more relevant to this specific persona. So finding the trigger. And a lot of teams actually have trouble with this, like figuring out what is a trigger or an observation about a certain type of an account that we can call out that we know our solution can help with. Um, mm -hmm. And I can even Do you have any particular favorite triggers, like a funding trigger or something like that that can- So, so this is the thing, like triggers are so dependent on your solution in your industry. Uh, for example, if I'm selling like a cybersecurity type of software, uh, a great trigger is probably some form of cyber attack that happened where you can tie like how that's gonna be a potential issue for uh, a CISO if they don't use your solution. Uh, funding is like the most common trigger of all time. I hate the I hate using funding as just like a call out, like, hey, noticed you uh, raised a 30 million series B and then going into like your solution. I think there needs you need to tie that better. So what I like to do there, if I do see that somebody raised around, go read the CEO or the founder statement as to what they're doing with those funds specifically and then try to tie whatever they said in that funding announcement. Maybe, for example, it's like we're building a new product or we're expanding into uh, Europe. And that means that, and if your solution can help with the expansion into a new territory, then you can tie that together. And that becomes a very relevant email that's going to get a higher response. Gotcha. Yeah, that that's super important. But I like what you said before about like a cybersecurity threat, for example, because that's something that could be spread to a lot more people, right? Like if it's a threat to one, it's a threat to all, whereas the funding would require a lot more like individual reading and research. So that that's a really helpful like scale tip for sure. Yeah. And then so uh, if you actually go back like uh, that email that I had for Kareen and Ryan, Right. So you, you have the context, like the, the trigger here for me. What I actually noticed with uh, Butler was that their engineering team headcount was actually decreasing compared to the rest of their company. So that's what I mean by like a trigger, right? That is going to gonna catch somebody's attention. Then I went to the current, then the ideal state. I actually could have done a better job of like telling it more as a narrative here. Uh, so that's just like a call out for myself. The other thing to mention, call to actions. I think this is a pretty standard, pretty standard knowledge now, but being more soft, like, you know, interested in doing the same. Is this worth exploring? Is this on your radar for 2024? And then the PS. So the PS for me is where I like to go one-to-one -one personalization, mm -hmm. especially for like my tier A accounts or accounts where I want to spend more time to actually do research and try to break through the noise. So for example, uh, Butler very publicly has like a website where he like tracks all uh, his days of sobriety. So just like calling that out specifically in the PS where maybe this would look a little bit wonky as me trying to like somehow tie it into the body of the email. I actually just do that in the PS, which is almost like a separate uh, like mini email in itself. You're breaking from the, the relevant topic that you're covering. Mm 